In recent years, Sony has been focusing more on releasing its exclusive games on PC, and The Last of Us Part 1 is the latest addition to this list. This is a full visual remake of the original PS3 release, based on the newest and most advanced version of Naughty Dog's in-house engine. And you may have heard that the PC version is a mess, and indeed it is. The game suffers from a lot of technical issues, including problems with shader pre-compiling, CPU, VRAM, and RAM usage. But at least on the bright side, the graphics menu is one of the best I've seen, and there is a lot of settings to tweak. And today, as usual, we'll discuss this PC port and we will go through each graphic settings, performance and visual impact. So let's not waste any more time and let's get going. On first launch, the game will start pre-compiling shaders. This is good and necessary to eliminate any shader compilation touchers. But this process takes a lot of time. On my Ryzen 5 5600X, the game took around 35 minutes to finish, and I've seen people reporting that it took around 1 or 2 hours to finish in their systems, and this is really unacceptable. The game also suffers from some memory leakage or memory management issues which affect the VRAM and RAM usage. Like here, check this out. This is native 1080p with the lowest texture quality. And here the game is using around 6.2 GB. And such low quality textures at this resolution should not use or allocate this amount of VRAM. CPU usage is also a problem. The game is CPU bound most of the time. Like here, I am in a closed area with nothing's going on, but the CPU is almost hitting 100%, and as a result, the frame time is all over the place, and the game doesn't feel smooth at all. Furthermore, image quality is not good in this game. TAA appears to be broken as it looks blurry and have less details compared to DLSS or FSR. However, DLSS and FSR also have some problems. On one hand, screen space reflections looks bad when using FSR. And FSR 2 compared to DLSS exhibit more shimmering. And on the other hand, DLSS and motion exhibit some temporal details issues. Like here, when I'm standing still, the image looks crisp and clean. But as soon as I start moving, there is a noticeable blurriness that takes over the image. And when using the flashlight, some surfaces show these black noises when using DLSS. So here, regardless of what option you choose, image quality will not be excellent. Now, as I said earlier, the graphics menu is really great. It offers preview images that shows what each setting does, with detailed description explaining everything in addition to what component will be impacted. And it's packed with a ton of settings. So let's take a look at these settings. But before that, I want to say that in this video, I will focus more on the performance side because of how demanding this game is. So my recommendations will prioritize performance over quality. And with that out of the way, let's start with animation. This one is supposed to change the quality of NPCs animation in a distance, but I can't see any visual difference between low and high. And on the performance side, it's the same story. So here to stay on the safe side, use low. Let's move on to geometry settings. Starting with draw distance. From what I've seen, this setting changes nothing. I tried different areas like here, including the area in the preview image from the graphics menu. And I've tried restarting the game, but there is no visual or performance difference. The game comes with various level of detail settings, including one for dynamic objects like this car. And for both low and medium, the geometric detail increase when the camera is closer to the object, compared to high and ultra. And performance wise going from low to ultra can drop performance by around 2%. So here I recommend at least high. We also have one for NPCs, and here you can see the difference between each option. And for this one, going from low to medium and high costs 1% and to ultra 3%, so here I recommend high. We also have one for environment, which mostly affect trees and foliage like here. 
and performance wise at this scene going from low to ultra drop fps by 3% here both low and medium exhibit pop in close to the camera that's why i recommend at least high Because of the game's high VRAM requirement and memory issues, I will not show any VRAM difference between textures options, because any data will not be accurate or reliable. But my recommendations here is to focus first on environment and also character textures, as these two have the biggest impact on visuals, unlike visual effects or dynamic objects. In texture filtering going from 1x to 8x drop performance by 2% and to 16x around 6%. Here I recommend 8x since it looks almost identical to 16x and can save you around 4% of performance. And lastly in this section we have texture sampling which affect the quality of sampling for distant textures like here. And performance wise I measured no difference between the options. So here go for ultra. Now let's move on to light and settings, starting with ambient shadows quality. Here going from off to quarter drop FPS by 2%, to half 3% and to full 6%. So here I recommend quarter. And directional shadows resolution which affect shadows from the sun and the moon going from low to medium costs 2% to high 6% and to ultra a big 15%. So here ultra looks good but 15% is a high cost that's why I recommend medium or high. Next we have directional shadow distance. Here when GPU bound this settings doesn't show a big performance difference around 3% from low to ultra. But when CPU bound like here, going from low to higher options can drop performance by 8%. So here I recommend low. Image based lighting visually is one of the most impactful settings in the game. It affects some surfaces and objects lighting like here. And also foliage like here. But the biggest impact is on water, like here, and on the performance side it costs around 2%, so keep this one on. You will see spotlight shadows mostly on the workbench, like here. And sometimes during gameplay, like this scene, where going from low to even ultra costs around 1%, so here keep this one on ultra. Point lights are more common in the game and you'll see the effect of point lights shadow resolution more and performance wise at this scene here going from low to medium costs nothing, to high 2% and to ultra 3%, so here I recommend medium. Bounce lighting increased light scattering from dynamic lights like here and performance wise enabling this setting costs around 10%. So here I recommend turning this one off because visually during normal gameplay it's hard to notice the effect of this setting. Screen space shadows quality enable and enhance the quality of small details and object shadows like here. And performance wise going from off to low, mid and high costs around 1% and to ultra around 8%. So here I recommend high. I spent a lot of time looking for the visual effect of dynamic screen space shadows during gameplay and I couldn't find it. And I had to return to the cutscene from the preview image. And here performance wise this setting has no impact. So keep it on. Contact shadow enhance self shadowing on characters and performance wise going from off to even ultra doesn't cost anything so here I recommend ultra. Visually ambient occlusion as usual is essential and disabling it can make most scenes look flat and performance wise it costs only around 2% so keep it on. SSAO here comes with additional settings that provide more information and enhance its effect like ambient occlusion denoise quality which improve the accuracy of SSAO and can cost like 1% so keep it on high. Screen space directional occlusion or SSDO improve ambient occlusion in indirect light areas like here and performance wise it does not cost anything. 
so keep it on. And finally on this lighting section we have screen space contracing. And this one improves ambient occlusion on small scale details where SSAO is not effective like here on Joel. And performance wise enabling this setting costs nothing, so keep this one on. Now let's move on to reflection settings, starting with screen space reflections. Here we have three sliders, each one controls one aspect of SSR, and if any slider is set to zero, SSR will be completely removed. Let's start with the accuracy. Here when using 10 compared to 100, this van's reflection is not complete, and performance wise this one has no effect, so keep it on 100. In SSR distance, you can see here when using 10 compared to 100, the pillars of this building are missing in the reflection, and performance wise similar to the previous one it doesn't have any performance impact, so keep it on 100. And the last slider controls glossy reflections quality, which affects only high reflective surfaces like here, and performance wise going from 10 to 100 costs nothing so keep it on 100. Now overall enabling SSR doesn't cost a lot, that's why I recommend keeping it on with all sliders set to 100. In addition to SSR, the game uses some other techniques for reflections, and real-time reflections quality controls these reflections, like mirrors as you can see here. or some bodies of water like here, and performance wise this is a demanding settings because going from off to low costs 10%, to medium 12%, high 15% and to ultra 18%, so here I recommend turning this one off. And if you decide to keep it on, this setting called real time cloud shadow reflections can include shadows in these reflections when enabled, and costs around 2%. Let's move on to shading settings, starting with screen space subsurface scattering. This one can enhance the look of character skin, like here, and costs around 2%, so keep it on. And the second and last setting here is refraction quality, which mainly affects translucent surfaces. Like here, you can see the real scene from this hole in this glass, and if we compare the three options, we can see that half looks flickery compared to full, and they both show a fake scene unlike multi-layered option which shows the real one, and performance-wise going from half to even multi-layered costs around 2%, so here I recommend multi-layered refractions. Let's take a quick look at some post-processing effects, starting with depth of field. Here during gameplay going from off to low costs 3% and to ultra 4%. And motion blur with 10 in the intensity slider and ultra quality going from off to full resolution plus melty costs around 4%. And finally bloom where going from half res to full res costs around 2%. And lastly, we have visual effect settings, with volumetric effects quality. This settings scale with the internal resolution, so for example here low when using DLSS looks bad compared to low at native, and performance wise this setting is demanding. Here going from low to medium and high costs around 11%, and to ultra 19%, so here I recommend low. And the second and last setting in this section is lens flare. Here going from off to full resolution doesn't cost anything. Now based on everything we saw so far, these are my recommended settings. Let's now do a quick comparison between optimized settings and ultra preset, and I'll be using DLSS quality mode on both sides to eliminate any VRAM bottleneck, especially from ultra preset. Here at this scene, going from ultra to optimize boosts performance by around 77%. Overall, this PC port is disappointed and will go down as one of the worst in recent years. The game suffers from a lot of technical problems, 
and honestly right now because of all these issues, especially the CPU performance, my settings may not be effective for everyone and they will not fix the micro stuttering caused by this problem or any other problems but hopefully when the game gets fixed you'll find these settings more useful and with that we arrive at the end thank you so much for watching and for your time if you enjoyed the video leave a like if not leave a dislike don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for any future videos and hopefully i'll see you in the next one